Trump has been humiliated by the UN Security Council over a vote on Iran. What happened and what's next? Welcome back to America Uncovered, or should I say, Humiliated Uncovered, because that's what the U.S. is, humiliated. There's been a U.N. arms embargo on Iran since 2007. It's supposed to stop Iran from buying weapons and also selling weapons to other countries. And that embargo is set to expire this October. Last week, the U.S. tried to get the U.N. Security Council to extend the arms embargo on Iran indefinitely. They did not. The New York Times called it an embarrassing defeat. So did the Washington Post. The Guardian said it was both embarrassing and humiliating. AP said the U.N. not only soundly defeated the U.S., but also resoundingly defeated the U.S. Even America's strongest allies refused to buckle under pressure from the Trump administration to take a harder line on Iran. And the Washington Post editorial board said that the Trump administration suffered a humiliating and telling loss. Wow. I bet Trump's face is so red. Just kidding. Does this look like a man who ever feels humiliated about anything? So what happened with the UN Security Council vote? Of the 15 UN Security Council members, 11 abstained. Of the four remaining members, Russia and China voted against extending the arms embargo on Iran, presumably so they could sell weapons to Iran. Not a huge surprise given that both countries have done military drills with Iran, and China and Iran are about to start a trade and military partnership. So China and Russia voted against the embargo. And the single country that voted yes to extending the arms embargo along with the U.S. was one of our closest allies, the Dominican Republic. Yeah, sure, okay. And that meant the extension of the arms embargo was defeated, since it had required nine yes votes to pass. And so it left the U.S. embarrassingly isolated. Well, Okay, besides the Dominican Republic, some other countries that are not part of the Security Council also supported the arms embargo. Those include Israel, plus the six Gulf Cooperation Council members, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, the United Arab Emirates, Qatar, Bahrain, and Oman. Which is not a huge surprise considering the geopolitics of the Middle East. Speaking of, you may have heard of the recent historic peace deal between the United Arab Emirates and Israel, which even anti-Trump people admit was a foreign policy success for the Trump administration. Well, that peace deal has serious implications for Iran, which is trying to expand its influence in the Middle East, and which, to put it mildly, hates Israel. Israel and the United Arab Emirates, the UAE, have had unofficial relations for years. But now that their relationship status is official, it paves the way for other Gulf states to recognize Israel as well. Like I said, Iran hates this peace deal. But they can't do much about it because so much of their trade goes through Dubai, which is part of the UAE. Analysts said Tehran can ill afford to lose Dubai as a trade route, particularly since heavy U.S. sanctions have drastically reduced its oil exports and made doing international business increasingly complicated. So this peace deal is a huge blow to Iran. And that's just part of the Trump administration increasing pressure on Iran, along with this arms embargo resolution at the UN. Fun fact, Iran has more ballistic missiles than any other country in the Middle East. That includes ones actually labeled Israel must be wiped off the earth. The U.S. State Department views Iran as the world's worst state sponsor of terrorism. At a press conference in Vienna, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said, we can't allow the world's biggest state sponsor of terrorism to buy and sell weapons. I mean, that's just nuts. Look, it's 2020, everything is nuts. 
And in a statement following the vote, Pompeo said the UN Security Council failed to uphold its fundamental mission of maintaining international peace and security. Not that the existing arms embargo has been super effective at stopping Iran from using their many, many ballistic missiles. Western intelligence agencies, along with UN officials, have determined that missiles used in an attack on a Saudi Arabian oil facility last year were manufactured in Iran, as were weapons intercepted by the U.S. Navy that were bound for Iran's Houthi allies in Yemen. Now, originally, the U.S. actually submitted a much longer and harsher resolution to the UN Security Council. It would have also included things like inspections of Iranian vessels and weapons seizures. But China and Russia said they would veto that one. On the UN Security Council, there are five permanent members, the US, the UK, France, and Russia and China. Any permanent member has veto power. So the US came up with a much weaker resolution. Gone were the explicit criticisms of Iran and a section calling for a sanctions committee to monitor Iran's compliance. The US still knew that China and Russia were going to veto the resolution. But according to U.S. Ambassador to the U.N., Kelly Kraft, right now the strategy is working with other members of the Security Council to put China and Russia in a corner and shine a light on them. So it came to a vote. A virtual vote because of the coronavirus, of course. Now to pass, it needed nine votes. Only the U.S. and the Dominican Republic voted yes, while China and Russia voted no. The other 11 abstained, including five from the European Union. Why did they abstain? In explaining their decision to abstain from the vote on Friday, America's European allies insisted that they too worried about an Iran with free access to dangerous weapons. But the American proposal to extend the embargo indefinitely, they said, would never have passed the Security Council because of the threat of a veto by Russia and China. So it would never have passed because of Russia and China, so why bother to vote at all? That's actually more efficient, because then China and Russia don't have to veto anything. They can just threaten to veto things, which has the same effect. It's like when a kid has so many temper tantrums that all they have to do is start yelling and then you just end up giving them everything they want, like weapons sales to Iran. Ah, the UN. Diplomacy in action. But the decision of the European countries to abstain from the vote isn't just because of China and Russia possibly vetoing the resolution. It's also because of the Iran nuclear deal of 2015, the one that the Trump administration withdrew from in 2018. If you need a refresher, check out our episode we did on that. Well, ever since the US left, Europe has been trying to save the Iran deal. You see, the UN agreed to end their arms embargo on Iran as part of that nuclear deal. And so if these European countries want to save the Iran nuclear deal, they have to support the ending of the arms embargo. But it would look bad if they voted with China and Russia. So they just abstained. So if there was this much opposition to extending the embargo, why did the US push for it at all? Well, some people think the U.S. never intended for the arms embargo extension to pass. According to Richard Gowen, U.N. director at the International Crisis Group, the U.S. goal this week has pretty obviously been to table a resolution that will fail. Why? Well, because of what's being called the snapback. Not quite. But close. Because this could blow up the U.N. Metaphorically. The Iran nuclear deal includes a snapback mechanism that allows an individual nation to reimpose expiring sanctions on Iran, including the arms embargo. Now, even though the U.S. left the deal, the Trump administration argues it can still do the snapback. The Iranian foreign minister disagrees. The U.S. snapback claim is so illegal that it is not acceptable, and the Americans themselves know it. Do not think that their loud protest means that they have a right on it. America knows it cannot call a snapback. I don't know if the U.S. feels that way. The snapback would reimpose all the sanctions that were lifted on Iran when the Iran nuclear deal took effect in 2015. That could include the prohibition of not just arms deals, but also oil sales and banking agreements. In theory, all U.N. members would have to adhere to the sanctions. 
This would be devastating for Iran, which is already struggling with a crumbling economy and the occasional mass protest. But this is also the U.S. sending a very clear message to the U.N. Security Council. The U.S. is the boss. The U.S. can put whatever sanctions it wants on Iran. The rest of the U.N. Security Council can disagree, but at the end of the day, countries either have to align with the U.S. or with Russia, China, and Iran. Or possibly they don't, like they did by abstaining from the arms embargo vote. If the U.S. proceeds with its snapback plan, it could lead to a situation in which there is no agreement on the status of U.N. arms sanctions, with the U.S. declaring they are in effect and most other countries insisting there are not. Great. So then it will be in permanent limbo with no decision being made. Of course, that all depends on how the upcoming presidential election goes in November, because a Joe Biden presidency might view Iran very differently possibly more like the Obama administration. The current Democratic Party platform advocates a return to the Iran nuclear deal. That could be why the National Counterintelligence and Security Center says Iran does not want Trump to win the election. I mean, they kind of know how Trump is treating them. But don't worry, Russia says it will host an urgent summit to solve everything. So what do you think about the UN decision not to extend the arms embargo on Iran? And what about the U.S. potentially upending the U.N. Security Council? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, this show is only possible because of the support from viewers like you. Even a dollar an episode can help. Visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered to learn more. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.